please, when you people go back, you tell your premier that it's impossible for these people to get re-elected if they let between 200, 200 to 300 people go and, and they don't know what their future is or who might be chosen to be elected or not elected, not chosen to be hired or not hired. Please tell them that. Will you do that for me, you people? I, uh, I have another thing that, that bothers me, but maybe it's a personal thing. When I was being Minister of Seniors, I wanted to learn. I went down to St. John and I lived in a nursing home for two years. Ate my meals, slept there, did everything. I learned a lot about nursing care because the, the people were so good to, to teach me. When I come back to Fredericton, and my people at the time were working on a plan that had been started, or a, a study that had been started by the previous government about the optimum size of nursing homes. And I sit there and listen. I don't have a university education or anything, and a lot of them certainly had. And I say, look, I'm not. I don't know a heck of a lot, but I know one thing, or two things. When you take seniors, that means the care. When you say home, that means a home environment for people that can't be in their own home. I don't know how a four-story institution is going to provide a home environment. That involves. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, it is very close to nine. You had your opportunity. We have two other speakers. The one, the one issue that I want to deal with is something that Pat Diaw had asked at the very first, and, and nothing was answered. And that's our community outreach. I just want you to really think about our community outreach. We've had those programs in place for 35 years. And we're, we feel that if a for-profit organization takes them over, they may run them for two years. But after that two-year point, if they're not making money, they may just opt in. That's all of those seniors that are at home and we're able to keep in the community longer may really lose out of that. Thank you for that. Years. For many years, 
the people of the North City, seniors and our children, have always been looked after by us. Our Mishiners are totally different people. We're not Moncton, St. John, and Fredericton, but all our Mishiners live in Moncton, St. John, and Fredericton because we're very special. But when we talk about seniors, for the last 35, 40, and 50 years, our seniors have been looked after by the workers for the last 25, 30, 40 years of the North Mishiners who work very hard each and every day to make sure that our mothers, our grandfathers, grandmothers, uncles, aunts, great aunts have been looked after. What's sad is that the province does not recognize the hard workers of the middle class hard working people. They show disrespect and it's sad. I was part of a government that I had to fight and fight and fight against my own leader, my own party because I had to show loyal to the leader and to the party first, which was wrong, and that's why I ran as an independent. But speaking when we talked about people, when we look at our communities, you know, I had the opportunity to have Dr. Percy Rozier, who delivered me. At that time, my grandfather offered up an apple pie and a jug of wine. <laughs> honey was nothing, honey was, honey was nothing. Right? We have another doctor. It's like his father, Jawari. He's fine, the doctor now. But Jawari's grandfather, Jawari's father, and himself give to our community and care about our seniors. Ministers and Ella. I might be criticized for what I say, but I speak my, my piece. Mayor Shears is sending a strong, strong message. And, you know, Number one, seniors who paid their dues in society. They paid their dues, but yet they're still taxed. They're taxed until we die. They, they gave a lot. So, what we're asking, P3s, no. We want government-run facilities with the hard-working, unionized people who devoted their lives over the years where we are give them back. Their pen, pensions got to be protected, as well as their jobs. And not only that, we're protecting jobs of the future children. We have too many people that are going out west working, and some of them ain't coming back. You know, it's sad. You know, when I see Denny, I know Denny very well. And I'm glad you're here tonight, Denny. Down in the northern, northern part of the province as well. Rick, I know Rick very well. I serve with him. They know what I'm like. They know I'm going to speak my piece and get dumped on. But here's the question. Number one, Denny, Anderson's Mill needs your help. The $4 million that the province is saying they own will help you pay back when you're not working. It's putting 100 people to work. Give them back the insurance money so they can start up. That, that, there's a clear solution right there. Number two, Nelson Forest Products. Get that mill back up and running. 143 people need to be back to work. Simple allocations. Give them a wood allocation. When I was in government, we gave that wood allocation with those bills. It never changed. Okay, also, as well, we want to make sure we have access to the $150 million for the Donor Development Fund. Also, the Minister is responsible for environment. And I'm sad, Bill, but if I was in your position, which I was, I stopped proposals for, for Habers to lose a contract. And, and, and you know what's sad? We have 40 people that those jobs are either going to Grand Falls or going to uh, Nova Scotia. And that's sad. That should never happen, and we should have stopped it. Now, Mayor Machines, are we going to continue to fight for what we believe in? To show we're not doing it for Up and running, Nelson Forest Products Mill will be up and running, and Haber, stop that contract, it's on the minister's desk. We don't want those jobs going to Nova Scotia. When I was in as a government for seven years, the government always said they're doing your, your company taker, the company taker, and I'm very fast company. They said they're doing a damn good job. They set up the recycling program. Why haven't destroyed? You have the power to stop it. 
I had it, and I took it, and I stopped it for many years. It's a proposal, you stop it, you stop it tomorrow. You tell the boss, and everybody, I served in there. You know who the boss is? Who calls the shots? It's the premier. He's the boss. The premier calls the shots. The MLAs, guess what? Bill and Lisa, in all honesty, you're not going to listen to the people down here and pump your ass down here with the people. Guess what? They're going to tell you something loud. The next election. And you can go out the door. Okay, so the next speaker is no stranger to the mayor machine, uh, John McKay. Thank you, uh, MLA Lisa. Um, you know, my name is John McKay, and I'm one of the MLAs that decided to close up the, the meeting tonight. Former MLAs, I guess. I, uh, I'm going to give you a little different take on what has transpired here this evening. I'm looking at people on the stage who ran for very, very honorable reasons. And that is to do a better job to represent their constituents in the New Brunswick legislature. Lisa, you used to be my EA. And I was proud to endorse you when you ran for MLA. Bill, I remember that meeting we had at the restaurant at the Rod. You asked me what I thought about you running for MLA. And it was one of the best days of my life to be able to encourage you to run. And I'm glad you did that. Denny, you and I rented a house together. <laughs> and you didn't pick up all of my bad habits. <laughs> I know all of you. Minister Rogers, I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, but I certainly read a lot about you in the paper. <laughs> I grew up and Rick, of course, taking the place of my old friend Sheldon Lee. I grew up as the most ardent liberal you would ever want to meet. I grew up on the philosophy of Louis Robichaud, who stood for the ordinary person, who stood against one of the greatest obstacles any politician would have to the point that it ruined his health and he had to actually have armed guards to escort his children to school because of the hatred that was fomented against him by the newspapers and by the Irving Corporation. But he stood with his people and he made reforms, part of which benefited many people here tonight because the Biden Public Service Act allowed for unionization of the public employees, brought the province ahead the party of equal opportunity. And I ran many times. I was a candidate here in seven elections. I was fortunate to have been able to elect it five times. And I was always proud, and I'm still proud, of that liberal tradition. But something has happened to the liberal party. Something has happened to the liberal government. And new people may not even realize what's happening. But the Liberal Party that, that I knew, and the Liberal Party that so many people here over the years supported, is not the Liberal Party today. Something has changed. And it's like putting the frog in the pot of cold water and turning the heat up. It's gradual, gradual change. And now, when people want to have a liberal government, they start leaning conservative or NDP because they look at my party, your party, and they don't recognize it anymore. And we're seeing an evidence of this right now. You know, this P3 thing is basically a plan to turn over the operation of a publicly owned and publicly managed and publicly run facility 
to a private corporation. Now, what's happened, of course, is that, well, it's going to be more efficient. But you realize what you're saying? You're saying that the existing nursing home facilities are not as efficient as they could be if they were privately owned. That's quite offensive to many people. Now, having that said that, the rates are going to be the same. <coughs> so much per, they're not the same. So much per patient, per bed. Per, the same formula, funding formula, is going to apply to all nursing homes. So the amount of revenue the government is going to put into this new nursing home is going to be the same whether it is a public, a public operated or for profit. So where is the incentive to the private owner to have this nursing home? He's going to have to squeeze it out of the operating costs. That's the only way he's going to be able to get his profit. Now, we're looking at other things that slide a little bit along towards this new philosophy, which is business is God, business is golden. You know, we were looking at, well, not only the nursing homes, but we're, we're looking at uh, the funding now in a province that is terribly tight for money, squeezing the old people, but that's changed now for the time being. But the old people are still been traumatized. Because you didn't want to take the lazy way and put a cent on the HST, which would have given you $125 million. Or put on the tolls, which the people suggested when you went around the province asking their opinion before the budget. But you found $25 million to put into a new playpen for the Irving hockey team in Moncton at their new arena. That's not liberal philosophy. And all I'm asking, I could see the drift. Ridge was there. I remember being at a, an annual liberal meeting up in Camel. Frank was premier, and we were having tough times. And a person came up to the microphone, and he said, I have a question for the premier. Can you, you tell me when the heart left the liberal party? And the Premier's answer was very, very, without hesitation. The heart left the Liberal Party when the money left. We're in tight problems now, but everybody wants to share in finding a solution. And the solution, my good friends, is my solution to you is to think. Think that business cannot be the only partner in the province. You can't take our wood away so that people have no employment and give it to a company that ships the wood out of Belgium and out of to other places. Yeah. Having the forestry capital of Canada, the Miramichi, being a region now where you can't even pro process a toothpick, is like telling the people of Alberta, you're not allowed to have oil. It's what we are. But you can do that. You know you've been in caucus, you've been at the cabinet table, you're in government. It was a government decision. It wasn't they decided that we're going to go B3, in all fairness. You people decided that. You people, because I know I've been there, I know how it's done. Bridge has been there, Tanker's been there, we know how it's done. You decided that this is what it's going to be. And you know what? You can do the right thing. You can do the right thing. And you can make another decision. Because governments change their mind all the time. They change their mind on the, uh, the, the attempt to take, you know, the, to squeeze the money out of the old people's money. Sincerely, hear what everybody had to say, and they put up with a lot of um, negative.
negativity here, and, and you know, uh, they, they, I do sincerely believe that they're here in your best interest. Um, I just want to take a minute, and I tried to refrain from talking, but I, I just couldn't uh, help myself. <laughs> some comments just so everybody knows. And it runs with government owes $10 billion. There's 750,000 people living in Brunswick that works out to we owe about anywhere from $13,000 to $15,000. Everybody in this room, whether you realize it or not, in debt. So this, this government, unlike other governments, has offered us a new nursing home. Whether you are happy with it or unhappy with it, period. They have offered a new place for our seniors to live. And everybody's got their comments about it, good or bad, and they have talked about it. But they have offered something to us that no one else has offered for years. <laughs> we have to respect that. And I, for one, recognize that the P3 model, I wasn't totally happy with it. And I wasn't happy for the main reason, not so much that the boards wouldn't be put together, but the the continuation of salaries and the medical benefits and pension plans look kind of questionable the way it was set up. And I think that Minister Rogers recognizes that tonight. And I can assure you from what everybody has said in this room, they are walking away and going to do their damn best to make sure that those are met. So you cannot be that you, as much training as everybody is doing, they hear smart people, she's well-educated Minister Rogers, she has a PhD in social sociology and she understands the issues. So the, the point I want to make is that these two nursing homes were falling apart and we have a government that is going to give us a new nursing home. So we shouldn't look those uh, give people in a negative way. We should embrace this. You've come here to talk to them. You've passed your message on to them. They've copied everything down. We need that new nursing home. The hospital is full of people that shouldn't have been in the hospital who were plugging up the emergency room, causing terrible care at the Region 7 Hospital. And they are offering a solution to that. So I recall in agreement with the unions that that there, there should be rocks and for their pension plans, no way and try to do something to rest assured. Thank you.